met metaphysical, spiritual themes that are for the um, for the enlightenment and for consciousness, etc. So we know why we're here. I mean, we're we're here to uh, to know and to learn and wait. So it's a nice historical day for us, I guess. We're fellow like-minded uh, people and we enjoy knowing, not the kind of uh, knowing that um, the, the masses are used to. And that's the kind we knew it was flat because it was flat. We knew it. And um, so you can imagine a conversation 600 years ago where some learned men would be sitting together about uh, how the dangers of going too far toward the West with your ship because you could go over the edge. And you imagine their conversations and they would have believed that the earth was flat, right? So um, kind of knowledge can be very dangerous. <laughs> and that's the kind of knowledge that is... Um, is called gnosis in Greek. Uh, the, the kind of knowledge we're looking for is epignosis. So we're going to talk about that today. Now, um, before I go on, um, I'm just getting rich messages here. So can anybody give me direct feedback as to whether they can see me or not? I believe everyone can hear me. Both. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Now, I'll just continue on then. Um, so this knowledge is uh, epignosis, which is, which is direct knowledge. So it's not knowledge based on opinion. So you're not um, thinking that the, the uh, earth is flat and in a false light. You see, false knowing is, is dangerous. It's um, it's very dangerous, and you see people who are who are joining their energy to the energy of churches um, and allowing themselves to be um, influenced by governing bodies of these churches. Uh, they are living a very dangerous life. So the theme of today's subsequent ones will be Prisca Theologia. Uh, so, Prisca meaning ancient, and Theologia is theology. And you'll notice that the word theos is in there, <laughs> because that's what we use to describe the God. So, but it's not the theocratic invented God of the monotheists. Uh, it's not theism. It's not about theism, it's about deism. And there's a big difference. So, um, uh, I'd like to introduce this subject, and on the weekend, on Sunday, I did a presentation about Prisca Theologia, and I'm doing uh, three presentations, which will be up on uh, YouTube um, shortly, in the next few weeks. In fact, the uh, first part... Uh, dealing with astrology will be re will be on the uh, the net tomorrow, according to the uh, my guy who um, did the filming. He works very quickly, and he also loves um, this this knowledge. He is a um, a big fan of it. In fact, he's he's done a documentary interview with me included in that um, interview and present uh, documentary which talks about spirituality and, and, and such things. So Amel is going to put those up very, very quickly. The first presentation will be dealing with astrology and nothing more. So um, you will be learning how the, the fundamentals of astrology, the fundamental tools, and you will know how to um, heal yourself and look for the weaknesses and the strengths in your birth chapter dealing with your health. You will learn that in the presentation about the houses. Basically, they are the only two 
um, the two um, aspects of astrology that I dealt with at a certain depth. Uh, the rest was dealing with meta metaphysical themes and physical themes. So with the graph that you already are familiar with, the uh, sine wave, I described how we can have the underpinning natural cycles for astrology. And I went through those cycles at length. Um, so I spent more time on those as, uh, as opposed to um, previous videos where I just touched on that subject. Uh, now, this Sunday, I'm going to do, I'm going to be dealing with throw theology. <laughs> um, now, I've never, and in this one, I will be dealing with um, mostly uh, the subject of the Bible. And uh, I do have a book which I'm going to be using mostly, and I've just uh, recently discovered this book. I'm trying to look for it because it's around somewhere. Anyway, the uh, book is dealing with the Gospel of Mark. And um, Mark, funnily enough, begins in Aries, the sign of Aries, where I begin the sign wine. Um, and so does the Gospel of John. Whereas Matthew and Luke begin with a nativity scene where baby Jesus is born in a cold, 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 cold play. And he... Um, he is visited by three wise men, etc. So clearly, Math and Luke are dealing with the cycle uh, December the twenty fifth, whereas Mark begins on March the twenty first. Voila, the magic day. So um, uh, I've discovered this book just recently, and I do have it here. There you go. That's the book. Uh, the Gospel and the Zodiac by Reverend um, Bill Dallison. This is magnificent. I'm only, actually, I'm only uh, exactly halfway through the book, <laughs> but uh, I'm up to the constellation of uh, Libra. And I've discussed, I've already um, made uh, plenty of notes for the presentation. Um, as, you, as you can see, that's how I mark my books, <laughs> mutilated my books. <laughs> so, but these, these are notes that I'm going to be including in presentation and um, starting with Aries. So this is exciting. This is really exciting because we can now prove that we have two Gospels that begin in, uh, at the solstices and two Gospels that begin at the equinoxes. So this is a good segue for me to, um, to mention the reason why I've been very, very busy. <laughs> I've, had, I've got two reasons why I've been busy. My computer has been running very, very badly, and so I haven't been able to um, really do a lot with it. I've been using my laptop, and that's been rather difficult. And um, secondly, because of this series of video presentations called Prisca Theologia and uh, some of the beautiful information that I hope to be able to share with you and, um, and mostly new information. This, this will be new stuff, mostly. I would say 80% of these video stuff and 20% will be that I have to carry over. I simply do have to carry over. Um, and the third presentation on uh, November the 20th will be dealing with the occult science and esoteric wisdom. And I'm going to be um, sharing the great Western tradition, the great Western hermetic tradition, which we have in the West, and which uh, Marsilio Ficino called the Prisca Theologia. So we owe these men it's from the renaissance time uh, thanks for reviving the Prisca Theologia and of course Marsilio Ficino was very very um, prominent in that I'll get back to him but I just want to finish off about the presentation 
um, dealing with the occult science. I'm also going to in include information where by the um, about thinking, speaking, and action, because they are the three processes of creation whereby we need to improve. We need to improve our thinking, our speaking, and our actions. So I'm going to share what Pythagoras and Ovid, Seneca, Porphyry, Plutarch, Plato, Hermes, what they all shared with the world about the best way to live the philosopher's life. The life of the, um, the initiate, the one walking the path, in terms of diet, in terms of um, actions and speech, etc. These are things that we are all concerned with because we know that in order to ascend, we need to transcend. We need to transcend our uh, weaknesses or vices, information about our Western tradition uh, in the final uh, the uh, six, uh, we'll, we will be able to establish and be confident that um, we have an intact, ancient, and all knowing in terms of the science of ascension um, tradition. And it's the Western tradition. You see, in the West, we've been flocking to the East for the wisdom of the East. And we've neglected our school and the Piscateologia. And in fact, Hermes, um, the boast of all the philosophers is that the first, the very, very first to give us the science was, um, was Hermes Trismegistus. I'll share that with you. From uh, Thermicus Maternus, Thermicus that, um, apart from many others, that revealed to the world the origin of science. And, I, and believe you me, I've shared a lot of stuff from this book in my presentation uh, on Sunday. And uh, the jewels, the jewels, this is the Mathesius of Thermicus Maternus. Um, and um, in here, he explains the, um, the true origin of the science. And he says, um, he presents to us the fact that uh, the science was given to us by Mercurius Trismegistus. And who might that be? Well, that's Hermes. The Romans call Hermes um, Hermes Mercury, and the Egyptians call Mercury Parfoth, thought, hermaphrodite, whereas the left brain is the um, the um, logical and sequential and um, five sense dominated brain, the male side. Whereas the the female side, the feminine side, the um, right brain is to do with Mercury. And um, and so Mercury is the one who holds the caduceus, the two intertwined serpents with the um, the wings above. And so that represents the two serpents the two electrical energies that go up and down our spines, the uh, um, Kundalini and the Kundabhatha. And the right and left hemispheres of the uh, brain are the, um, are the wings of the Perseus. And so we are a serpent. We are a solar system unto ourselves, you see. Um, the sun, of course, being the, um, the heart chakra. And the three spheres above, the throat chakra and the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, they correspond to the planets above the sphere of the sun, 